Hello, my name is Stanislav, I'm a programmer. I and my partner Dmitry, who is a 3D artist, created a game called Act Normal for the Houdini Game Jam 2021. We started almost seven years ago as a small motion design studio, but two years ago we decided to switch to game development, and since then we've been making games and having a lot of fun. And uh, we exclusively use Houdini for all of our projects. Also, we are the hosts of a popular Houdini-themed YouTube channel for a Russian-speaking audience. At first, we thought the theme was a bit limiting, but still we came up with a lot of great ideas in the brainstorming phase. Because we always wanted to create a physics-based game, we ended up making an ultra-realistic dating sim. This gem brought us a lot of new experiences. It was the first time Dmitry modeled a character, or at least a piece of one. It was the first time we made a physics-based game, and it was way harder than we thought. And also it was the first time we documented the whole process and posted daily devlogs. So yeah, it was an interesting experience. Act Normal is a physics-based game about eating food on a date. Think of the surgeon simulator, but with tomatoes. It's just a silly little sandbox where you can spend 5 minutes of your time throwing food all over the place. Or you can try to show off your manners and uh, act normal to win a second date. The process of creating 3D assets for games is a bit tedious. You have to create a high-poly model, a low-poly version of it. You have to bake all the maps, you have to paint textures, create a rig for the low-poly version, you have to create good UVs. And should you decide to change anything in the original model, you have to start all over again. That's where the procedural nature of Houdini kicks in. Most of the steps could be done automatically, which saves a lot of time. Our game is about eating food with a hand, so let's start with the hand model. It was the first time Dmitry modeled an organic object, so it was a process of trial and error. He often had to change the topology and shape of the hand. This is where the new Kinefix toolset helped us a lot. The ability to procedurally create a skeleton is a life changer. With each iteration of the model, the skeleton was automatically rebuilt and the weights adjusted. You can iterate faster, and even without prior experience, you can create something resembling a real hand in a short period of time. Our game is a sandbox, and sandboxes need toys, so we had to create a lot of models. Cucumbers, tomatoes, potatoes, buns, cutlets, all the stuff. Most of the models were created in the old-fashioned way. But the beauty of Goudini is that you can create your own set of tools for any pipeline. And we created several HDAs to simplify the workflow with the high and low poly geometry. The basic principle is that you store the high and low poly geometry in one stream. It's quite easy to do, you just pack the high poly version and hide it. So in the viewport you only see the low poly version and you can work as usual. But also you, you have the high poly version of geometry in the same stream, and this already gives us some advantages. First of all, it's just visually easier to manage. You don't need to pull two connections each time to merge the models. Secondly, we can now make assets that will process both high and low poly at once, with one node. For example, for proper baking, you need to divide the geometry into by groups, which must be created for each component of the model, for low and high poly geometry separately. If we can act on both versions of the geometry at once, it simplifies the process tremendously. You only need to add a couple of nodes, and everything will be sorted out automatically, with the correct naming. It was also easy to make a tool that compares two meshes to quickly see possible problems at the baking stage such as how well the silhouettes of high and low poly geometry match. Due to the way the models are stored in one stream, it's very easy to use, just add a node and immediately see the result. This speeds up the workflow and it's more difficult to make a mistake. Houdini and Unity work well together, allowing you to iterate quickly and create variations of models. You don't need to worry about naming or anything else, just press one button and all your meshes, all your materials are updated. Very convenient. Also, the Houdini Engine Unity is quite an impressive and uh, effective tool, especially for environment design. A bit of advice for people who want to participate in a game jam. First of all, read the rules. It's very important. Some jams have very strict policies, and it's better to understand them in advance. Second, don't try to implement every known game mechanic. Focus on just one major feature of your game, and make it feel really good. Test the build of your game earlier, and test it on different computers with different screen resolutions, it will help to solve a lot of problems in the future. Play the games of other developers, and leave constructive comments. Also, be happy and work in Houdini.